Good evening, good evening, good evening. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our midweek gospel explosion, pastoral teaching. And we thank God for you sharing your time with us on today. We do honor God who is sovereign and supreme to his son, Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, and to the Holy Ghost, who is our comforter, leader, teacher, and our guide. And to each of you in your respective places, we greet you with Jesus' joy and certainly in divine love. Well, tonight we'd like to call your attention to Romans, Romans chapter 12. And we will begin reading at verse number one, Romans chapter 12, verse one. <clears throat> Again, we thank God for you sharing your time with us on today. If you're there, you will find these words recorded. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we present your bodies, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse two, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment. We pray now, God, that you release your power, your presence, your anointing upon this vessel, that I may preach with power and teach with clarity. I ask now that you anoint each of us, anoint our hearts, our minds, our spirits, that we might believe, receive, explore, apply, and share this word. In advance, we give you all of the honor all of the glory, and all of the praise. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray, and every heart said, Amen. <clears throat> Tonight, drawn from Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, we want to talk about transforming our thoughts, lives, and destiny. Transforming our thoughts, lives, and destiny. If we're going to get to the place where God wants us to be, I believe that it begins with our thoughts. If we're going to live the life that God wants us to live, uh, then it begins with our thoughts. Our thoughts begin the process of changing our lives, and ultimately changing our destiny. <clears throat> my brothers and my sisters, the world in which we live is always telling us that we should be living a successful life. Their idea of the successful life, I believe, is having a cold beer, a cold drink in our hands, sitting in a tropical paradise and being surrounded by beautiful, wealthy people, places, and things. Commercials, we see them all the time. Commercials and billboards picture the successful life as charming landscapes and luxury or luxurious lifestyles. Are you with me? But what is really the successful life? How do we become successful in this life that God has given us? Life is what God has given us. Lifestyle is what we choose to do with our lives. So again, what is 
the successful life or even a successful lifestyle? Well, I believe that deep down inside, everybody, every human being knows that the successful life or the prosperous life is being joyful and prosperous inside and out. It is something we all long for, and that is to have joy on the inside and joy on the outside, to be prosperous inside and outside. I believe that all of us long for that, but most of us, even those of us in Christ, in Christendom, most of us believe that it is impossible to achieve. To, to, to achieve what? To achieve the joyful prosperous life. Most Christians believe that it's impossible to achieve. The question is, why would God our Father put that desire in us and then gives us no way to realize it or for it to come to pass? He wouldn't. I don't believe God would do that. You see, my brothers and my sisters, the Bible teaches us that we can live the successful life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So if Jesus is the way to the successful life, why isn't every Christian those who profess and proclaim to follow Jesus. Why is it every Christian living the successful life? Well, listen carefully. The Bible tells us why. Mm -hmm. We must first, here it is, we must first change the way we think. If we're going to live a life of success and prosperity and joy, we must change the way we think. Proverbs 23 and 7 says that we are what we think. What does that mean? Well, that means if we are poor, miserable, lonely, scared, sick, broke, or frustrated, and in a rage all of the time, it is because of what we are thinking. Are you with me? If we see ourselves working hard but never getting ahead, then we will probably continue to work hard and never get anywhere. You see, my brother can be successful because we can be born again. And being born again and feel with God's spirit. Uh huh. But if we are constantly thinking of ourselves in terms of poverty and unhappiness, that is what we are going to experience in our lives. So let's go back to the text. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2. Paul, as he writes to the Romans, he said, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we present our bodies 
a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then he goes on to say in verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and, and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see that? Now, what does that really mean? Well, let's see. This, mean, this means that when our minds are consumed with the word of God, we will be transformed and moved into the right direction. Then we will also prove to the world around us what is the will of God our Father. And his will, hear me well, and his will is always Truly good. Fully acceptable and perfect. I say that again because I don't want you to miss it. God's will is always truly good, fully acceptable and perfect. You see, the Bible makes it very clear. The Bible makes it clear that God's will is for us to succeed and live in joy unspeakable and full of glory. That is God's will for our lives. And we must grasp that because the devil, the enemy will sometimes, most of the time, trick us to think that God want us to be stumbling and fumbling all the time. God, our Father, his will for us is to succeed and live in joy unspeakable and full of glory. So I have two questions tonight that I want us to think about and perhaps answer ourselves or to ourselves. My first question tonight is who's controlling your soul. Who is controlling your soul? You see, the text says, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, the text says Christians are not to be conformed or controlled by the world or conformed to this world we are not to be fashioned and configured, configure ourselves like this world, to adopt the customs of this world, and to be compressed into the world's mold. That's not what we are supposed to be like. You see, from the moment, watch this, from the moment we are conceived, the world and the spiritual enemies or enemy of God are bombarding us with thoughts that run contrary to the word of God. Wow. That means even in our mother's womb, Basically, even when our mothers are carrying us, when, when we are conceived, the world and the spiritual enemies of God uh, began to bombard us with thoughts that run contrary to the word of God. Now watch this. If the world and the devil, you do know him, Satan, our enemy, our accuser, if the world and the devil do not succeed in keeping us from Jesus Christ 
and we become or we get saved, then the real battle begins. Mm -hmm. Just because you become saved don't mean that the devil is going to leave you alone. That's when he really begins to confront you with issues and problems. Listen carefully. Although that happens, Satan is on his job and he's trying to, to get us to do the wrong thing, to be conformed to this world. However, we are not to continue to be conformed to this world. We are to be, to, we are to be conformed to the image of of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior. So the question may be asked, how does this happen? Well, listen carefully. We are, as Paul says, as he writes this letter to the church at Rome, or to the Romans, we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds with God's word. Once we become a child of God, once we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal savior, we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds with the word of God. We have to change the way we think and we have to change the way we think about everything. Now, I hear what you're saying. What does it mean by being transformed? Good question. Glad you asked. The word transform, translated from the Greek text, means metamorpho, which is where we get the English, English word Metamorphosis or metamorphosis. Are you hearing me? Give an example. Those of us who went to biology or science class, we, we, we learned that the caterpillar changes into a butterfly. A caterpillar, which is a, a, a worm that crawls on the ground changes to a beautiful flying butterfly. That means that there were metamorphosis. There was a transformation. So how, I hear you, how are we to be transformed? We know that the caterpillar, the worm, transferred into a beautiful butterfly. The worm once was crawling on his belly, now flies. Now, what is our process of metamorpho or metamorphosis? Well, Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, that it is the renewing of our minds. If there are going to be a metamorphosis in our lives, there's going to be any transformation in our lives. It is by the renewing of our mind. By renewing the way we think. Now, the word renew can be also translated renovate. Uh -huh. We have seen things renovated, changed, redone. So, so when Paul, the Apostle Paul, tells us we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, he's saying to us that the Holy Spirit 
moves in. This is the transformation. The Holy Spirit moves in and begins to renovate, watch this, begin to renovate our souls with the word of God. Are you hearing me? What does the Holy Spirit, what he does is he tears down strongholds of deception and lies and replaces them with the truth. Let me back up and redo that. Paul is telling us we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. What happens when we are transformed by the renewing of our minds, the Holy Spirit moves in. We allow the Holy Spirit to move in, move in. Uh-huh. And he tears down the strongholds of deception and lies and replaces them with the truth. Uh-huh. And one of the first things he does is show us who we are. I said I had a couple of questions uh, that I was going to ask on tonight. If we're going to be trans, so are we going to transform our thoughts, lives, and destiny? Then my first question was who's controlling your soul? That's what you need to ask yourself if you don't know the answer to that. If you don't know um, who you really are, ask yourself who is controlling your soul? And my next question, the second question is, who are you? Do you know who you really are? My brothers and my sisters, it is a sad thing, or it is sad to say, when people, it's sad to say that people live their whole lives and never, ever, never understand what it means to be a human being. Not even talking about being a Christian. Not, not, they really don't know who they are. What it means to be human. A human, a human being. And what happens is they spend all of their years trying to find out who they are and why they are created. But guess what? They never go to the creator. They go to other people or other places or other things to find out who they are instead of going to the one that created them. I believe if all of us did a little reading and studying the Bible, all of us would see that God create, created us in three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. The Bible teaches that, but many of us, we don't understand that and we don't know that. That God created us in three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Now turn with me very quickly to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. 1 Thessalonians, turn over a few books, you'll find 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. And this is what Paul says as he writes to the church at Thessalonica. And the very God of peace. Let me go back and read a couple of uh, a verse. Go back to verse 21 so you can get clarity. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Every form of evil. 
and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Listen. Our spirits, soul, and body are intimately connected and all three works together. Our spirit, you do know man was spirit first. Our spirit is a part of us that communicates with God. We were, we were created to walk in communion with God at all times. God created us. That's how he created us for his purpose. And we are, were to walk in communion with him at all times. Now, under this spiritual headship is our soul. In and our soul, which is our mind, emotion, and will. Are you following me? Then our soul in agreement with our spirit and God's spirit tells our body what to feel, say, and do. I'll say that again. We were created to walk in communion with God at all times. Now, under the spiritual headship, under the spirit, under the spiritual headship is our soul, which is our mind, emotion, and will. Then our soul in agreement with our spirit and our spirit agree with God's spirit tells our body what to feel, say, and do. Are you hearing me? Although our physical body is our contact with the natural physical world. Yes, that is true. But it is not supposed to be in charge. Yes, our bodies make contact with the natural and physical world, but our bodies never, ever, never were supposed to be in charge. Our spirits are to be in charge. And my brothers and my sisters, the spirit is the highest form of living. Why do I say that? Because our spirit man communicates with the Holy Spirit. And what does the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit connects us back to God. Are you hearing me? And God is our source. The Holy Spirit connects us back to God who is our source. Well, I hear you talking. I hear you perhaps saying, what about our senses? God gave us five and then he gave us common sense. And you know, we always want to use that. What about our senses? Well, here it is. Here's the answer. The senses, the five senses that we have constitutes a lower level of living. So, because of that, we must not allow our five senses to dominate. Taste, feel, smell, hear, see. 
We must not allow our five senses to dominate. Therefore, we must renew our mind to the word of God. If not, we will become carnal. And those five senses, I think I said them all, but you know what they are. Hear, smell, taste, feel, and see, talk. Saints, my brothers, my sisters, we were originally created to live from our spirits. We were created to live from our spirits in full submission to our God, our Heavenly Father. And you see what God did? God placed us or placed in us a desire to love and be loved by him. A desire to love him and be loved by him. He placed that in us. Now, our souls, which contain our thoughts, emotions, and will, are supposed to operate according to our communication with God. Are you hearing me? You see, my brothers and my sisters, we were never meant to operate on the basis of our contact with the natural, physical world. We were supposed to operate on the basis of our communication, according to our communication with God, our Father. Now, something happened after God created the first man. Something happened, something strange happened. And perhaps most of us, we know the story. The fall of man occurred. The fall of mankind occurred when or occurred because Adam and Eve acted upon communication or communicating from the outside world. They began to communicate from the outside world, from the serpent. Instead of communicating with God on the inside, in their spirits. They communicated with the serpent who was on the outside. They communicated with the serpent which was on the outside. I keep saying that because I want you to understand that. Instead of communicating with God from the inside with their spirits, they communicated with the serpent. Hmm. You see, when we act according to our senses and our natural thinking, we can easily be deceived and easily sin against God. That is what actually happened to Adam and Eve, the first man and the first woman. In the Garden of Eden, which was their home, Adam and Eve's home, in the Garden of Eden, Eden Adam and Eve was living the successful life. They were living a prosperous life. They had every material thing they needed or even wanted. 
They were healthy and happy. They loved and honored each other. Their lives were ideal. Their environment was perfect. And it was all based upon their intimate relationship with God. But something happened. Something went wrong. What was that? Well, let's turn back to the first book, Genesis chapter 2. I know you know this, but I want you to see it. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. You will find these words. We'll read 16 to get more clarity. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Wow. You see, God gave Adam and he continuously give us free will. Adam exercised the free will that God had given him. And he ate of the tree that he was not supposed to eat of. You see what happened with Adam and it happened with many of many of us today is Adam acted on the counsel or the instructions of the serpent instead of God's word and made the wrong decision. And many of us today are making the wrong or bad decisions because we had been transformed by the renewing of our minds through the word or by the word of God. So Adam made the wrong decision. And Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17 says, immediately he died spiritually. He didn't die physically, but he died spiritually. And remember I said earlier that we communicate with God through our spirit. So my brothers and my sisters, there is a way to do it. There is a way of transforming our thoughts that will transform our lives and ultimately transform our destiny. And it happens when we are transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we may prove what is that good and accepted and perfect will of God. Yes, God want us he want us to be successful and live a successful life but God will not force us to renew our minds he will not ref he will not force us to live a successful life he'll leave it 
up to us. He will give us free will. But my brothers and my sisters, as a child of God, you are given the grace of God, the unmerited favor of God to live a successful and prosperous life. And many times and oftentimes we miss it because we refuse to renew our minds so that we can renew our lives and re and renew our destiny or transform our, our lives and my mind's lives and destiny with the word of God. God has given us what we need to have a successful life. But again, I must say, it is up to you and me to possess it. Part two will be next week. Part two of transforming our thoughts, lives, and destiny on next week. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment. We thank you, God, for allowing us to come together on tonight. We pray now that you will let this word tonight sink deep into our hearts, minds, and our spirits, that we will become better, better Christians, better disciples, better ambassadors of yours, as we carry out the assignments that you have given us individually and collectively. We thank you, God, for reminding us through your word that we have what we need to be successful. You have given us what we need to be prosperous. We pray now, God, that we receive this word on tonight and we will go forth with vigor and vitality and be who you have called us to be. We pray for those who may be sick and shut in on tonight, those who may be suffering from a melody, for, from malady, a disease, those who may be confused and, and, and heartbroken. We pray that they will look to you, who is the answer for the world today. And we intercede on their behalf that you will touch their lives and renew their spirit. In the marvelous, matchless name of Jesus the Christ. We thank you now for all that you have done, what you are doing, and what you are going to do in our future. Well, my brothers and my sisters, thank you for sharing your time with us on today. And if you're listening and if you're not saved, and perhaps you may have back slid, you walked away from the presence of the Lord. We'll give you an opportunity to come back to God. He's waiting for you. He's waiting on you to return. He will restore you in your proper place with him. And if you've never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, now is a good time to do that. For the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He died for our sins and God the Father raised him for our redemption. If you, believe, if you believe that on tonight, according to the word of God, you are saved. And if that's you, if I'm calling your name or your number and you're not saved, I would just ask you to pray this prayer with me or repeat after me. Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I need the gift of salvation. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He died for my sins and you raised him for my redemption. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And make me a new creature, a new creation. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. If you prayed that prayer on tonight and repeat it after me, and if you and you really believe it with all your heart, according to the word of God, you are saved. And I want to encourage you to make the next step, and that is to connect with the Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church so you can know what your next steps are and where someone can lead you to where God will have you to be. 
And of course, if you need our church, you can call us. That's Innovation Baptist Church, 850-575-0818. Or you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org, and someone will help you along the way, help you with your next steps. And if you need a, a replay of this message, you can log on our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org, and you can get the replay. And because of technology, you can even share it with someone else. Well, my brothers and my sisters, thank you so much for sharing your time with us on this Wednesday evening. Until Sunday morning at the 945 hour, you can share again with us on Facebook Live, or you can join us in the sanctuary. That's Innovation Baptist Church, 2150 Bellevue Way in the capital city of Florida, Tallahassee, Florida, 945 a.m. on Sunday morning. Until then, stay safe, stay strong, and be blessed is my prayer.